<laughs> well, g'day, Jenny. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks, Peter. Nice to uh, to chat with you. Yeah. Um, so, just we'll just start off just quickly. Like, uh, who are the kind of people that you're working with at the moment? And then we'll kind of track back over your your journey to get an idea of where you've come from to where you've ended up today. So who are the types of people you're working with? So um, basically the type of people that I'm working with are are entrepreneurs, network marketers, and people who genuinely want to help other people get results. And um, when I mean network marketers, I mean people that kind of have been in the industry for a while perhaps and they're kind of t- tired of the the hype, and you know the the um, there's a lot of hype on, especially online these days. With you know, it's kind of marketed as get rich quick scheme. That's that's kind of the me- message that comes across. You know, people and so many people fail in the industry because they're they're really quite misled um, in the fact that it's like, you know. See how I made thirty thousand dollars pressing these three buttons or whatever. I mean, it's not quite to that, you know. Well, I have seen stuff like that, but you know, it is, it is almost like that. You know, they just make it seem too easy, and people people are buying hope, and you know, they, people they want to achieve something more out of their life, but they kind of get sucked in with that type of you know copywriting, and they they buying on emotions. Mm rather than understanding, hey, this is an actual business and, you know, it involves work and it's something that you've got to build up, not just buy a lottery ticket and hope that, you know, next week you're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. So so that's the kind of people, you know, people that do aspire to, to kind of build something else in their life, you know, with a, with a passive residual income, but understand that, it's it's not a get rich quick scheme. They're tired of you know trying to sell sell overpriced products. Yeah. Um, you know, pitch their family and friends on the, every deal that comes along. You know, oh, the, the, the people that are kind of over all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So from the sounds of things, because uh, we kind of met three three years ago now, just, and we've sort of known each other here and there, and had little interactions mm. through Facebook mainly. Um, yeah. But I remember way back when I was first looking for online opportunities and marketing and stuff like that and le- learning how to use the internet, uh, I actually joined a company that you happened to be in the same company. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how we I kind of met. That. So, so I joined yeah. up um, with a guy who actually is now, um, I don't know if he should, I don't know the rules in here. Should I say his name, shouldn't I? I don't know. His name's, oh, well, his name's Vitaly Grinblatt. And uh, he, he's actually now the magnetic sponsoring newsletter writer. Right, so he's a copywriter oh, there. So okay. what happened is I joined that company in my endeavors to learn something online. My The thing that lured me in was the, they're going to train you on the internet. The business side mm. is the business side. They're, they're all generally business is business. Network marketing is no different than selling from the stage, than selling your own products, creating your own um, uh, store, like your own shop and selling stuff from it. Selling is selling is selling. So I get that the network marketing model is, is actually a good business model. But so what, let's go back to how you started in that industry. Um, mm-hmm. And to, to be clear, guys, like, yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm out of the industry now. And, but I still value a lot of the lessons that I got for training, mm. training up to do business and, and how sales works and how the mind works. There's a lot of great people in that industry. How did you oh, start out? Okay. How did you start out? Yeah. And how long ago was that? Uh, it was actually about eight years ago now and um, I got started because I'd had a baby and he was four months old and I'm like, hmm, well, I don't want to go back to work and I definitely don't want to just sit around, sit around home and talk baby talk. <laughs> I think I need a bit of a challenge. <laughs> um, so I actually got started in an MLM uh, nutritional product company, you know, selling weight loss products and stuff. And I did that for about, oh, it was close to five years. And I tell you what, it, it was definitely, um, you know, I came in all bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, you know, thinking I was going to be a millionaire in, <laughs> in 12 months. I said to my husband, don't worry, we are never, you're never going to have to work again. In 12 months or two years' time, we're done, you can quit work. Okay, well, <laughs> it didn't quite happen like that. <laughs> really? It didn't happen? <laughs> no, it didn't work. All I could see was how much money you could make, but no one ever tells you about the struggles 
that they've actually gone through to get there. It's no different to Richard Branson building a business or any other entrepreneur building a business. It's the same struggle and challenges that you have to go through. And, you know, so I worked at this really, really hard for close to five years and I just found that, you know, the more people I recruited as such, the more people quit. Hmm. And you just it was like filling an empty bucket constantly. You know, people just coming in, they, they had that barrier of actually selling a product that was had a lot of competition, you know, um, and it's just the barrier of having to sell sell something, even though they say, oh, don't worry, it's just sharing and just share your story. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You're yeah. laughing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. There's but, not much I haven't heard yeah. of. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, but ultimately, this it's still boiled down to the fact it is sales. So, you know, most people really, to be honest, sucked at it. So, yeah. so most people end up quitting and, you know, you end up, four and a half years down the track, uh, actually in the worse position than when you started. So that kind of led me eventually to, I thought, oh, there's got to be something else, you know. And same to you, I turned to the internet and I got attracted to the exact same system. I thought, oh, this, you know, I can sell this top tier product. I can make, you know, the sales that I make, the money comes to me. I don't have to worry about having thousands of people to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to learn about the, you know, this whole attraction marketing thing. You know, learn people come to me. I thought, oh yes, I've always, I kind of had this instinct even when I was back in that other company that I didn't want to walk around wearing badges and talking to strangers on the street and doing surveys and all those things. And I kind of fiddled a bit with online marketing. Like I knew how to use Google AdWords because I'd self-taught myself, so I knew a little bit. But, yeah, just the whole attraction of learning how to market, how to, how to tr- traction marketing. and But, you know, once again, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. You know, in fact, it's a huge learning curve, um, very big, huge learning curve. There's so many moving parts when it comes to online marketing. You know, you, you get on and the first thing I did was, I don't know why I did this, but the first thing I did was thought I'm going to, because my mentor had done it, I'm going to build my own website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So How could it be? I battled with that for so long and, you know, there's no help. There's not really anyone to kind of show you step by step how to do it. You just kind of like figure it out for yourself. But that because I'm that type of person, I did figure it out myself. It took me a while, but I eventually figured it out and I persevered and I solved problems and, you know, I got my first website up as bad as it was. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't WordPress um, back then either, was it? No, actually, yes, WordPress was around, but I did. It wasn't. I built what? What did I build? It was some sort of HTML page. You can't remember yeah. how on earth I did it. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was wasn't a very, you know it wasn't the best website. But so and then you know you've got the same websites and you've got you've got to learn about autoresponders and how to you know communicate with your list and you got to then you got to learn how to build funnels you got to do content marketing youtube marketing google adwords there's just so many moving parts and the same thing after years of this i also realized this is just as unduplicatable because people get stuck in there all oh yes this is great people come to me but so people would be there for 3 years and never make a sale <laughs> say i might make 10 you know, get 10 leads mm. because they're so busy in, in the minutiae of things, you know, trying to build websites, write, write a blog and, you know, just doing things that aren't productive, mm. that aren't actually building their business. Because I remember a time, because this is that's actually that training system in that company that we're both in, it was great. Like that teaches you everything and mm. lots of things, but that's mm. the thing where, as a new person coming in, you're learning everything at once and you're just jumping into this whole world of, it's a mess, basically. Overwhelm. Yeah. Overwhelm, basically. Mm. So they, they they actually tote that it's going to, yeah, people come to you and all that sort of stuff, but it's actually crazy, crazy hard to, to get your head around it. It's three years ago now, or probably three, closer to four years ago now for me. Now I'm comfortable with it. Like, had I not gone through that, you know, I wouldn't know anything about blogging, videoing, yeah. article writing, copywriting, headlines, Facebook, all that sort of stuff now. But putting yourself back in that spot there, and trying to learn all that, like put yourself back there now and just imagine that first day where you started trying to crawl through oh, the system. I didn't even know what a webinar headache. was, you know, like. <laughs> no, it's a webinar. What's a webinar? And then you, then I didn't tune into my first webinar 
for for yonks. I just watched all the old training calls, mm. and you know, then you the first thing I learned was like a Facebook thing. I think that was the the closest I went to. Ah, this is something I kind of understand. You know, you put up a post and whatever happens, and magically I got a thousand leads. But no, it didn't happen. Um, so anyway, yeah, I asked a question in the forum there, and you were the first person that answered me. So, oh, yay you know, for me. <laughs> yeah, so look, it was just like I just had well, a question about something and, and that's kind of my first interaction with you is, oh, th- there is actually a community here to help people yeah, um, yeah. And, and you were that person at that time. So it, that was kind of cool. So thank you. Um, yeah, now, now, back in that time, right, you started out and you'd already had five years experience in learning, okay, well, here's an industry, you get leads, you make sales, yeah. um, you know, talking to people and they teach you all about posture and and special language to use and all that kind of stuff. So you came in kind of, kind of almost ready. So when you hit the internet space, did, did was there a, a an alignment between the two, or was it just like two different worlds completely? Well, do you know what? I actually realised that when I hit the internet internet marketing space, was that what I had gained in the last four and a half years was, okay, yeah, I de- developed a mindset, you know, an entrepreneurial mindset. I was, you know, had that that hunger and that drive, but I'd actually come out with really no skills <laughs> other than to perhaps talk to people on the phone. That was about it. You know, there was no actual skills in marketing. So th- I, I guess there was a bit of an alignment in the far as the mindset start and understanding what it takes to build a business, whereas that's, you know, a lot of people don't understand mm. even that they think it's you know they come in well like me you know eight years ago when I thought I was going to be a millionaire in two years mm. you know which people have done mind you so it's not I'm not saying that's not possible yeah um because it certainly is but it's you know didn't happen for me and and um so yet yeah, people coming into that space completely new and just being totally overwhelmed with training and information and you know all the day-to-day stuff of of internet marketing and then um, being kind of caught up in the the hype of it all, like, you know, putting out marketing that's all about money and, you know, see how much this person made or see how much I made in this month, press one, two, three. You kind of get kind of sucked into it and you start doing it yourself. It's only when you pull yourself out of it and you realise, oh, my gosh, was I saying this stuff for, you know, it's not really like that. And there's a lot of kind of inauthentic people as well that don't, you know, and it's not it's not entirely their fault. You know, they're just kind of doing what they think works and what converts, you know, mm. but they're not actually thinking about how can I actually really help people get results? How can they d- duplicate what I'm doing? Yeah. So, what do you, what do you see as a possible solution to that? How how could you help someone who? Because because let's talk sort of more specifically now about internet marketing, which transcends industry. It's just across all businesses. Kind of what is it? What's the where's the substance in the internet marketing as opposed to the hype and the garbage? Like, what, yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I think that you can. This the internet is a great tool for building a business, um, especially like social media and stuff like that, and. And, you know, but you have to you have to be kind of what I try and help people with now is to just be a little bit more proactive and not expect that they can just write a blog post and have hordes of hungry people <laughs> coming after and wanting to buy their stuff. Um, so it's, it's being a little bit more proactive, building relationships with people. That's really important because ultimately building a business – you know, you need to have relationships and you need to have connections with people. You know, there's so much talk online these days about, oh, see how I recruited all these people and made all this money without ever picking up the phone or talking to anyone. So people kind of get into that headspace of, oh, you know, it's people are lazy basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are lazy, so they see that as a as a as an in for them, but, you know, very quickly get disillusioned when they realise that it's not actually like that at all in fact mm. the people that have got results have ultimately at some stage built relationships or connected with people or reached out to people or got on the phone it wasn't what they say it is you know what i mean so yeah so what what do you think is the disconnect there then how how can they keep getting away with that you know like if if I, if I do something stupid in a business right and you know in 
for example, let's go back to my copier days, right? I'm a, I'm a photocopier technician. My, I started a business with a friend of mine helped me. He sold machines. I serviced his machines. I've got a reputation in Sydney as, oh, there's a guy out now servicing Xerox machines. So I started servicing machines for his competition. He was okay with that. And then I was servicing both of their competitions. So I ended up serving like about five or six different people around Sydney who all sold machines. I could have... I could have done some, some really nasty stuff and sort of sent traffic to my friend, you know, sent people to my friend and, and got sales and, and started selling toner to these people that gave me service work to their customers, which I made a promise to each of them. You keep their toner, I just do the service. So we had that relationship. We had clear boundaries. If I started turning one against another and, and, and that sort of thing, you know, I'd soon get a reputation and have no business. <laughs> they'd all say, they'd all get wind of it and they'd all say, forget it. You know, I don't want to deal with you anymore because because of what you're doing. How is it that these guys can keep? I suppose, I'm not really asking for that answer, but how can they keep getting away with doing this stuff? You know, like reputation wise, if they keep saying, "Push three buttons and you make a gazillion dollars," but it doesn't happen, and then everyone knows it, and social media now amplifies that, that message. How how is it they can keep getting away with that? Well, because there's still people that are relatively new to the industry. You know what I mean? So for for us veterans who've been a while, a way, um, around for a while, we kind of tune out to that hype. We don't, we know, you know, we've been around a while and we know that it's not true, but there's still people who are kind of, kind of desperate looking for a solution and, you know, they, all they see is the dollar signs. That's all they see. You know, they see this headline about, oh, did you see that guy? He's making, he's making $90,000 a month. And all he had to do was one, two, three, you know what I mean? That's all he had to do. But in reality, it's not like that. And, you know, I I certainly know that in North America, they are shutting down, trying to shut down a lot of that kind of hypey stuff and programs and systems. Um, But it's not completely evacuated yet, unfortunately. Mm. So for Um, someone out there, right, they've, they've seen this. They've experienced it. They've kind of gone through and they're, they're just sick of the nonsense. They just want something real that they can work with. You know, what should they be looking for? Um, how, can they spot the, the non, how can they spot the lie versus the substance? Well, I guess all of us deep down, we know, we know when we can see someone who's actually being authentic and being real. You know, they're not just bragging about how much money they're making. Um, they're kind of creating value, they're offering training, they're offering to help people. Um, obviously, you know, you're not going to be in a position where you're just uh, a charity case and helping everyone <laughs> for free. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're providing value in the marketplace. They're not just pitching, you know, this launch and that launch. And, you know, a lot of marketers do that too. They jump from one launch to the next launch and just keep promoting launch, different kind of products and launches and you know then it's you know for a lot of people that's supposedly in industry about helping others it really is about just filling their pockets you know Mm. pockets with as much money you know i mean don't get me wrong we're all in the industry to make money we wouldn't be in business if we didn't want to make money so don't you know let's not pretend (laughs) that we're not about making money but you know at some point you've got to kind of draw the line and say well you know for, for me now i've kind of got to the point where I think, well, my success can only be based on the success of others. If I'm not helping someone get results, then I don't really consider myself to be successful. So I kind of gone off the track a little yeah, bit, but right. um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's, a good way I like to kind of think about that sort of stuff in any industry. If if you, if you've got a job, right, and you're not bound by employee, so you're contracting to a company doing something, some service, right? So, for example, I have, a, I have one client and three days a week I spend time with them and I work on their websites, doing SEO, 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 and, and, and creating up content and putting up pages and helping them. If I suddenly slack off and my production level drops by three quarters, I'm doing a quarter of the work that I used to be doing, they're not going to be happy with me. I'm not providing value mm. to that employer. I'm not helping them. Mm. So they're going to say, look, I don't want to keep paying you because I'm not getting value for money here. Would that be yep. a similar analogy in, in, you know, you're helping these people, the more you help them, the more value you provide. So they're going to keep paying money to, to keep getting that help. 
Well, exa- well, they, they're going to, regardless of whether they're paying anything or not, they're just going to want to keep working with with someone that's actually helping them. And it's not you don't necessarily. When I mean help, you don't. I don't mean you know always kind of doing it for them. That's not no, not helping no. them. That's kind of disabling them. But um, it's more about pointing them in the right direction, giving them solutions. Okay, well, this is how you would do this. You know, but state communication. It's, it's all about communication and quite often there is, you know, in a lot of these uh, on internet marketing kind of programs, systems, whatever, once the people buy the product, they never, ever get to speak to that person they spoke to <laughs> ever again. I've seen that happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that, you know, if, you, if you're providing and you're helping someone actually get tangible results, mm. then – you know, obviously they're going to kind of keep want to keep working with you. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this then: if if you were to start out now, right, knowing that you've got five years of the offline world of doing that type of business, and then another probably almost that much again of online uh, experience and knowledge, let's say you just stopped everything that you ever did and had to start again. Right, you're a brand mm-hmm. new person. What what would you do, like for someone and for someone listening in now that's like brand new, maybe sort of going, hey, look, I'd like to sort of maybe get into that, but here's someone who can actually help me. What what advice could you give that person? What would you do if you were to start completely from scratch again? Uh, look, you know, I, I don't know whether I would change what I done because everything that I have done has led to where I am. You know what I mean? So I, if I hadn't have had that experience, I wouldn't be where I am. Mm. But I would certainly, certainly steer clear of any sort of um, hype. You know, if it looks too easy, then kind of run the other way. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's definitely something I would steer clear of, you know. All this talk of, you know, Making a hundred grand a month in two months or whatever it is, you know, making it sound too easy. Um, that's definitely I would I would stay because it doesn't matter what business you're in. It it's all comes down to you have to be able to build a business, um, you know, like a real business. Mm. It doesn't matter what business it is. It's got to be built. There's a lot of effort and you know, and challenges and obstacles and all that sort of stuff. Nothing's nothing's easy. Mm. So if it's too easy, so, if they say it's easy, that's that's just an instant, easily discountable thing. Okay, too easy? No. Nah. Yep. You, you, you're you're pointing yep. me in the direction of this is going to be easy. So avoid that. Mm-hmm. So what what would you be yep. drawn towards? What kind of office um, would you be drawn towards? Personally, well, like, for example, what I do now um, is I actually I actually market something that, and this is just the best way of kind of explaining and giving you an answer, um, is something that is actually a service, a service-based business that's actually no cost to the end user. Mm. So it kind of removes all the barriers of selling because no one's selling or buying any products. Um, So, and and it's easy to share with people Mm -hmm. because again, that whole barrier is removed. So when you say, as soon as you remove those barriers of, I was going to say, so those barriers you're talking of, you're talking like say auto ship for a company, which people put, you know, $150 a month that they have to, to stay in a company or something like that. That's yep. removed. So, so there's none of that. Yeah. It's removed. There's no, um, okay, I've got to buy $5,000 worth of product and then I've got to learn how to get rid of that now, how to sell it. Mm. There's none of that, okay. Um, and I don't know whether I actually, you know, kind of bring this up or talk about it, but mm. the company that I actually am working with now is is basically – it's all about it's a it's a loyalty card, like, kind of like flybys, but it's it's a cashback card. So people mm. so and it's free. So um, people can easily share that, 
And it's it's not all about you know rec- you got to recruit millions of people to <laughs> for, for the rest of your eternity. Yeah. Uh, to to build a residual income, it's not like that. It's not you know I'm going to make money when you sign up. It's not like that. Um, there is no uh, monthly fees or auto ships or products to sell. So I don't know. This it's it's just it, like I said, it removes all the barriers of actually selling something. As soon as you remove that barrier, it, it makes it so much more duplicatable. Yeah. Okay. Because you you're removing even the the kind of the advertising from it. You know, like marketing and all the the time consuming stuff that the internet takes. So, mm. so yeah, so basically you kind of, yeah, just to kind of go back to where we're headed here, you, you're looking to avoid anything that says it's just totally easy and you're looking to go towards something that actually has a real world tangible service to someone on the other end. So there's, there's yep. a service being provided. So like flybys, you know, when you walk past and they go, um, yeah, you got flybys, you know, when you go through the checkout and you got flybys, you hand over the car, they swipe it and done. It's, there's a service there, like it's free to sign up to flybys. And and you get yep. flyby points, and you can take plane trips, and you can do stuff. But but all it sounds like all the business stuff is happening on the back end with flybys and the other companies. So mm. so with so you found that. So like to me now, it's that's starting to sound. Oh, this sounds like another easy money making thing. Like how how could you remove that resistance that I would feel thinking? Oh, there's no products, there's no selling, there's no marketing. That to me, that's sounding like an easy thing. Um, yeah, for someone listening in, like, let's, can we get specific on what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Okay, so Cause, cause let me let me Because this of, is the thing. This is the thing with network marketing. They're always like careful about mentioning companies and doing it. I have no affiliation with any company, and um, you know, so you're free to just speak about whatever you, you're doing. I'm happy to okay. let people know. Okay. So I want to give you kind of a, com- a comparison. Um, can you imagine when Mastercard, for example, got started up? Okay, now it's global. It's all over the world in millions of you know, millions of people use their card. The kind of, uh, the company that I am working with is called Lioness and it's it's a cashback card. Okay, their slogan is cash back on everyday purchases, money back on everyday purchases. So it's basically, it's a shopping network, but people that have just simply redirecting their spending through this company and they get cash back every time they buy groceries or fuel or furniture or whatever. So no one's changing any habits. They're just still doing what they would be normally doing. You don't have to pay for the card. Um, and eventually that, you know, it's kind of, it's a, in its early stages in Australia and North America, but it's actually a 10-year-old company mm. and a $3 billion, $3 billion uh, company. So it's not a fly-by-night you know, rinky dinky little company. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a very, very solid company that started in Austria, you know, about 10 years ago. And it's in 41 countries already, spreading through, you know, it's about spread through Asia and Europe and India and, well, it's already in Europe, sorry, India and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like being at the forefront of that, you know, the growth and, and building that kind of the, the brand, I guess. Yeah building the brand and bringing on shoppers and and just recommending the card to other people. And and all those, there's little, you know, there's there's benefits of bringing on and recommending people the card. Yeah. But it's really the, the only money that's ever paid out comes from the merchants because the merchants are redirecting their advertising dollars because they're getting, it, it's a win-win situation for both, for the customers and the merchants because the merchants are getting a pool of, loyal customers, like if you have their card, the, the cashback card, obviously as a shopper, when you need a couch or a fridge or whatever, you're going to go to a, the merchant that gives you cashback, obviously, you know what I mean? <laughs> to, so, to the one that isn't. Yeah, yeah. Over, so, over one that's not, yeah. Yeah, so you're going to go there. So they, they've got guaranteed customers or it's for a restaurant, okay? If you, you go to a restaurant every week knowing that you're going to get cashback, of course you're going to go there. Hmm. So... Um, so they're guaranteed customers. They know they're going to get customers so that they can re- redirect some of their advertising budget that goes back to Lioness and the Lioness pulls that out into the, into the you know, the people that are building out the network as such, building out the shoppers. Okay, so it's, for example, if, I, if I'm going to buy something 
say like uh, like a lounge. Um, we, we sort of talked earlier. You were saying Freedom Furniture is one of their merchants. So, uh-huh. so if I want to go buy a lounge, well, I'm going to choose Freedom Furniture over some other company because, well, if I go there with my Lioness card, I'm going to get some cash back. So when I, it's kind of like they don't. We were talking about it before too. They don't have the scan system yet. So like, no. um, you, you were talking about they. You can get uh, so almost. I think of it. This is the way I kind of. I fathom it in my head because whenever we talk about comp plans with companies, my head just goes into la la land and disappears. Oh, so same. It gets too same. Complex, <laughs> too complex. It's too but the simple way, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like uh, you're buying credit for your phone. So you pay thirty bucks, and now you can make thirty bucks worth of phone calls. So what they you were telling me before one time is you can go to Lioness, you buy a a card like a what do you call it? like card. a gift card. It's just, so it's like you go to JB yeah. Hi-Fi, you buy a gift card, you go in and you buy some CDs at JB yeah. Hi-Fi. You can almost buy it for someone as a present. So yeah, you get your yep. gift card, you go into the shop and say, look, I want to buy that lounge. Here's, here's you know, my $200 gift card, put it down and you buy your $200 lounge. So you were going to yep. buy the lounge anyway, but you're choosing to yep. go to the, a company who's part of this whole system. So it's, it's yep. like you say, it's, that's what a loyalty card is. It makes me yes. shop there instead of over there. And yep, then after exactly. that, because I made that purchase through that card, it's coded. That, that funnels back through the company. Lioness says, okay, instead of spending money on advertising, we uh we, we'll give the money to you for shopping there. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And there's a bit of a cash back and then you get a loyalty a kind of a loyalty credit as well which kind of builds up builds up and then you get you know something from that. I don't want to get into the whole you Yeah, know, yeah, no, no, it's too much. Thing, I, I, but, I would lose interest yeah. anyway in my yeah. <laughs> the stuff. But yeah, yeah. but ultimately so, that's it. Like you get if you're going to yeah, shop anyway, you may as well shop and get money back. Bringing merchants and shoppers together. I mean, that's as, as simple as you can put it, you know, bring in the merchants. And, um, you know, as I said, we're, it, it kind of at the, at the stage here in, in Australia and North America where it's that visionary stage and because it's it's quite early on. So mm. it's not by any means a, a get-rich-quick scheme. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, but it's, it's something that is, uh, you know, it's a very, very solid company and, you know, it's a, what I like about it, it's a win-win situation for both parties. It's very, very easy to duplicate a market because no one's actually having to sell something. They're not trying to sell you the card. Yeah. You know, the card is free. So where, where is the obstacle? You know what I mean? So it's very – it's I what I have found actually is that I have people in my team – if you want to call it a team. Which yeah, I guess you're using old terminology. Um, but yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> people will understand that anyway. Yeah. Um, is that people who have had no results before are actually so excited because they've, they're coming in and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is so easy to share. Mm. This is so, you know, it's because I don't, I'm not, this, the, again, it comes down to no obstacle. of The barrier is removed of actually selling something. Okay, you're selling a concept. Maybe that's about it. But you're not actually asking for money to exchange. You, you know, you're not buying something from me. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that, yeah, for someone who's looking for something to work from home or something like that, this is a good – now, I'm looking at um, – I'm just jumped over to their website while I'm here, and I'm looking at it. Now, there's a bunch of brands flicking by here uh-huh. of, of companies who are signed up as merchants for Lioness, as you know, places that you can go buy stuff. Rebel Sports – they're yep. on board. Um, is this right? Sony, Oxfam, Puma, Nissan. They're all like, these are all major. Quicksilver. I'm just watching them flick by now on this little yeah. Zoom yeah. thing. Um, they're all big brands. So it's like, it's, this, like you said, it's no rinky okay. little thing. It's, it's like no. big companies coming together rather than spending on advertising. They're bringing in, they're just connecting shoppers with companies and building loyalty. So instead of spending the money over there, they give it back to the customer. Yeah. I dig it, man. As, it's as a far completely as this is... win-win situation. There is no risk. I love it. There is no risk and there is no uh, – there's absolutely no risk because everybody wins. Well, it's free. And Every, everybody up. wins. There is no, no. There's nothing to lose. So okay. – No, that's, um, that's mad. Can we – let's let's sort of backtrack a little bit. You know, like um, – so obviously now you, you've had some people and they've got some results. They're actually making a little bit of money now where they weren't making yep. anything ever before, you know, thousands of things that they've tried. Now, one thing I like about this is you've come from a place of experience where you've been in the offline network marketing thing. You've been in yep. the online network marketing thing, you, the attraction marketing. I've seen photos of you over in Vegas with 
all the big stars of you know the of that industry in America hanging out with these mm-hmm. guys. You're coming from a place of experience, right? Mm. Which is cool. Which is like which is why I wanted to get you on and have a talk to you about this. And because you were talking to me, and you made a blog post actually just about. Oh, a little, just a, I guess you've explained it a little bit here, just a little bit jaded with how things are and things aren't quite what they seem and all that sort of stuff. Can we sort of just dig into a bit of that, you know, because there's a lot of people out there I'd imagine right now that are feeling it's not living up to what everyone said, and but they still believe in the model, they still believe in the idea, they still believe mm. in themselves, but they're looking to... It's, like, it's, it's a weird thing. It's like chasing wind. You can't catch the wind. Yeah. They're yep. just missing that that element. Like, could we talk a bit about your just your experience through the years, right? So you started out one way, and now you're here. You got you found this cool thing. Can we talk about your experience there and your journey and how it made you feel? Well, like I said, so I went through the the um the offline thing and you know did all the traditional stuff and then kind of went with the attraction marketing and the internet marketing and learned all the intri- intricacies of that. Um. You know, I went through, uh, you know, where I was actually, you're right, I was in an industry where I was, you know, mixing and networking with some of the top people in the industry, a lot of them great people, you know, just some really good people. Um, But I just see a lot of, I guess the word is people misleading other people on on how easy it is to build a business and that's kind of what was, is kind of, I, when I stepped back, when I kind of, you know, stepped away from it at all and I, I kind of got a completely different set of eyes and I saw a bird's eye view of what's actually happening and most of all seeing people in my team struggling for years to get results and that's I didn't want to be about that anymore. I didn't want to just, you know, bring people, sign people up and, and they're just struggling away forever. And like, there's no, there's never any guarantees. Okay, there are going to be people that are still going to come on and think it's easy peasy, no matter what you say. Mm. Okay, and they're going to come on. They do nothing. You can't help people. They're going to do nothing, or they're just not going to listen to you, or they're just, you know, you're going to get those type of people. But for those people who do have that bit of a, you know, bit of a drive and a bit of a inkling and a understanding, just to not, you know. Stay away from the hype, basically, because you know it's it's not it's not what it seems, mm. and that's that's kind of what disillusioned me. Not disillusioned me. I think that's kind of a, bit just, of a strong word, yeah. Yeah, strong word. I don't want to kind of you know I'm not here to you know bang bash <laughs> the industry or anything yeah. like that. That's not what I want to do. It's just that I want people to have a a clear understanding that if you're going to build a business and you're serious about building a passive residual income or whatever, that let's get real, it's not, it's not, um, you know, press one, two, three, and it's all going to come to you. So would you say, would you think it's fair to say to someone, say, look, if you're going to come in on anything, prepare for three years of, three to four years of learning. It's like going to university Mm. because they they sell it. Oh, it's so easy. You can just do it. People wouldn't come in if they said, oh, okay, you're going to struggle for the next three to five years. Yeah, they, no, they, they wouldn't. You, you they can't wouldn't sell come that. in. That's, that's why they can't – that's why people – honestly, why they don't sell it like that. Hmm. Oh, join me. I'm making $90,000 a month, but it took me eight years to get here. You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. just – you know, you, could, you can't sell it like that either. So <laughs> it's it's not, you know – I think I was I can't remember who said this, but I like people who are honest. And you know, if you approached a leader and you said to me, "Oh, look, I want to just blog and I want to do that every day," and you actually said to them, "Well, sure, you can do that, but don't expect to make any money for twelve months to two years." You know that that is what you kind of you know just just be honest with people. So I guess that's know. something to people for people to look for too is is a person, a mentor, someone that can actually tell it exactly. how it is and give them that guidance to say, yeah, this is this is probably what's going to happen. You, you want to do this? That's a great idea. And here's what I, from my experience, think is that how it's going to turn out. You might do be the whiz bang guy because everyone believes they're going to be the guy that's going to knock it over, knock it out of the park, hit it for six <laughs> in six months. Oh, you don't yeah, know how many people I've I've brought into business. 
and then I'm going to be the next superstar and, you know, I'm going to be so awesome. <laughs> and then, no. you know, two weeks later they've disappeared. <laughs> so, yeah. No. So, so um, you kind of learn to f- filter out that stuff as well. There goes the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we talked about it before. What happens if the phone goes off? Um, so I, here's what I think. I think anyone that's going to make it or has made it, was probably always going to make it anyway, no matter yeah. what they were going to do. Absolutely knocked it on that nail on the head. That that is absolutely right. To those people that, you know, um, are making that type of money, it wouldn't matter what it is, they would have made it anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they're just that type of pe- people. So, the, you know, coming back to that original question, who is it I'm wanting to work with? Well, that's the type of person that I would want to work with, you know. Not, you know, I can definitely. I want to train people. I, I want to help people. I want to get people results, and I can show them how to do it using a combination of, you know, kind of not really offline, but you know, using a combination of social media tools and you know, building relationships with people. Mm. Because the company that I'm with, it's all about building relationships. It's not a, you know, you can just sign up on a landing page and. <laughs> you know, opt in and you subscribe to paying money for the rest of your life to something. Yeah. It's not like that. It's a relationship business. So, you know, and I really am quite enjoying it, to be honest, because I'm, I'm back to kind of where I was in, you know, network, the old network marketing because I am building a relationship but just have different skills now, different skills that I can bring to the table as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, the, it all comes down to the experience <laughs> That you can bring to the table, but you know, in those relationships, you can sort of now, I don't know how long you got, like eight, eight, nine years or something experience. And I wouldn't even say what you're doing now is really kind of network marketing, is it? Or it's, no, not, it's, like, not. it's, not, it's not labeled as that or, or anything. This is it's kind not, of, not, it's not. Really if it was in different. the same space, like it would be way bigger than any of the top three, you know, network marketing companies, but it's just not in that space. No. You know what I mean? So it sounds totally more in the, the real world. It is. It's space. it's kind of a combination of the, you know, network marketing, real world, traditional business kind of thing. It's a combination of both. So mm. yeah, so that's good. So, so you've, you you're you're obviously happy where you're at. So you you kind of figured out the kind of people you want to work with. Um, so how can you help them specifically? What, what what is it that you can bring to the people to help them in doing what you're doing now? Um. Well, I guess it is It is my experience. I know what works and what doesn't. I can, you know, I, I really, I'm all about keeping it simple now um, because after years of experience in online marketing, oh gosh, you can spend so much time wasted on trying to build a funnel and, you know, fluff around with that sort of stuff where you could actually just be simply connecting with people and having a conversation <laughs> Mm. You know, and most people are doing that anyway. It's just getting, you know, teaching people how to connect with the right people, you know, the right people to be able to build a business. And there's, you know, there's different marketing techniques and stuff, but it's it's simplicity. It really is simplicity, building relationships and, you know, having the barrier removed of actually selling a product. Mm. And, um, you know, having, having someone, you know, I do... I do some team training and I have webinars and stuff like that as well. Um, and I do really, really, really help my people, you know, whatever they want. They can Skype me and and I'll, give, you know, I'll, I'll help them basically. <laughs> so. You'll get back to them and answer their question like yeah, you did for me yeah. three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I know from first-hand experience that, yeah, like yeah, you are someone who generally has a good heart and that wants to help people. Now – what kind of results of, of some of the people you've had so far? Um, what kind of results have, have they gotten with um, – and, and not so much, not just a money result, oh, this person made $600 or this person made that because that goes back to that that situation. What are some of the, exactly. the, the other results that they might have had, you know? Okay, well, and, I, and here I'm just going to talk not necessarily just about what I'm doing now, but um, when, I, when I share something, I like to kind of just – give it all I don't hold any secrets or you know I'm just not going to tell them about that one I don't I don't see people as competition or <laughs> you know <laughs> um I like to just kind of give it give it them all and say well this is you know this is what I did uh this is exactly what I did actually 
so you know I suggest that you follow this strategy or you do this and obviously massive action okay mm. it's not I'm gonna you know oh I might drop one fly in the letterbox or whatever it doesn't that doesn't happen um, so I've had people that have actually um, done what I've said and really taken the bull by the horns and within weeks have grown a full-blown business, hmm. you know, and then they've kind of like overtaken what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is awesome. Now they're doing better than me. This yeah. is cool, you know. Yeah. And then I've had people with me now that, as I said, you know, earlier that have really not had any results before, really struggled, struggled with the whole trying to sell a product, trying to, you know, oh, this talking to their friends and family or whatever, but I'm actually truly excited. They're getting people signed up for the lack of a better word. Yeah. Um, because we stripped it all back and just like this is simple. There's no need for complicated funnels and blogging. I mean, I still blog and stuff, but that's, you know, I've had years of experience. I wouldn't ask anyone to do that that hadn't, you yeah. know what I mean, because they'd be wasting their time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just simply strip it back. Let's simplify this. I know what it takes to get, you know, get you results. Just let's 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 do it. You know, and we kind of we have a few mastermind sessions and stuff as well where we kind of get together and discuss different avenues as well mm. of how to how to build the business. So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much you know definitely people getting results who hadn't done before, and that's I think, you know. They've had experience, but they just hadn't kind of quite got there. Yeah. So, and that, once you get a result in anything, um, it's just a matter of, okay, well, how did I get that result? And then just refining that one thing that you did. Exactly. Really well. If you can do it once, you can do it again. Yeah. So. Yeah, because that's, um, that's, that's definitely, I, I really like that. I like that, the, the simplicity and, and just, just getting the result and just keep it going, keep doing that result again. Mm. And then sharing mm. that information with other people. Mm -hmm. That uh, and help them get results too. Excellent. All right. So, um, so if people want to kind of find out a bit more about you, uh, get in touch with you, maybe give you a call, opt into your list to find out a bit more about um, you. Yeah, maybe this is the first time they met you, or for people that have like been watching you for a while that are now like, no, nah, you know what? I got to get in touch with Jenny. She's the girl. Where do we send them? Okay, a couple of places. First place uh, I think would be my blog, which is uh, whoisjennyryan dot com. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other place is, you, you know, quite welcome to send me a message on Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com, Jenny Ryan, J-E-N-N-I, by the way, I should have mentioned that, J-E-N-N-I, yeah. R-Y-A-N, Jenny Ryan, F-B, <laughs> very original there, <laughs> F-B for Facebook. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to link this all up anyway, so I'm going to go back, listen to okay. this, type it all down and, um, yeah, link it up so people can just, like, click click straight under the here in the show notes and uh, and visit your blog, visit you on Facebook and get in touch with you and just say, hey, watch the interview. Let, let Jenny know you watched the interview too, that uh, where you've come from so um, she can get a good a good understanding of, of what's, what you actually already know and, um, yeah, you just, just have that conversation. All right, excellent. Well, thanks heaps, Jenny. Uh, it's been good talking to you. I've been meaning to, to have a chat with you for years, really, I think. Um, <laughs> but but now, I've, now I've got this little platform here of my show. Uh, it's been actually good to, to instigate yeah. it in this way and uh, hopefully bring a lot of value to people who, who have been struggling, who are looking for someone who, who's been through the ringer and come out the other end and survived and, uh, and has now that's, figured that's out it. a way <laughs> that is simple and uh, other people can do it. And it's, it's, I really like it. I really like the concept. It's actually been presented to me a few times from a few different people. And then when you came to me with it, it that made me go, mm, there's something in this. <laughs> that's actually mm. what turned me around to think that there's more to this than just some other startup exactly. nonsense thing. It's the fact that it came from you was made me think, hey, this is, this is a potential for someone who's looking to, to oh, start thanks, something. Oh, thanks, Pete. That's all right. Okay, guys. Um, so, yeah, click on the links. Go visit Jenny. And uh, thanks a lot, Jenny. You've been a great guest. Thank you. Great chatting with you.